welcome once again to the way network uh to all our viewers both in ghana africa and the world at large we just want to say thank you we appreciate you and we love you so much for the good work you are doing out there and then trying to learn to broaden your horizon when it comes to self-awareness and self-realization and we at the way network is are ready to give you every bit of information necessary for that objective to be attained and to be achieved over here in the way network we believe that everybody has the grace everybody has the potential everybody has the ability to make life better and to collectively help elevate the earth consciousness to be quit a robust universe for the future generation we are of the belief that we as a people in this present incarnation we are not here to take anything away from the universe rather we are the children of god we were created in the likeness and the image of the most high so we are the children of the most high god and we are here to contribute our specialness to contribute our latent potentials to contribute our special abilities for the collective good of this universe this is what you are not being told. But the truth still remains that we are not here to take anything from the universe. And this we want everybody to understand and to come to that inner conviction. That we are here for one reason and that one reason only is to contribute our specialness for the good of this universe. We were sitting in higher dimensions of frequency and we saw a lack, we saw a need we saw a want in this universe. From the higher space, we looked upon the universe and we saw how beautiful, but how porous certain aspects of this universe is experiencing. And then we decided to come down to this dimension to, to, help, to help resolve, to help contribute our abilities to elevate the earth consciousness. And also, to better enhance our experiences. So it's a two-way thing. We are here to acquire knowledge, to attain experience, and to mature people. And after acquiring the knowledge, attaining the experiences, and then having the maturity, we contribute that specialness of our ability in a matured way to collectively help elevate the earth consciousness. That is why we are here. And that is the reason why, in our ignorance, as we clamor and Creep for earthly pleasure, going in for the wealth and gold boxer mineral to make ourselves wealthy and rich people. At the time when we are close to our exit, we kind of take pen and paper and distribute everything back to the universe. We leave everything behind. Why? It is the universe way of reminding us that the reason why we existed on earth is not to take anything away. We are here not to take anything from the universe, but we are here to contribute our specialness for the good and the total collective elevation of the earth consciousness. Now, the sad aspect of this whole journey is that after we have acquired so much wealth, so much riches, so much money, and we are about to leave, and we are reminded by the universe that, no, you can't take anywhere, anything away, please. Leave everything behind because you are not here to take anything away. So we take pen and then distribute everything back to the universe. That is called in law, we call it our will. The final testament that you put on paper to ensure the, the proper disbursement and distribution of the wealth you accrued over the years that you spent on this planet Earth back to the universe. But unfortunately, the one and most only important thing that you are supposed to give to the universe, you were unable to achieve it. And that is that specialness which is embedded in your soul by divinity to use and come to this world and use it for the good of this universe, you are unable to uncover it. And you are going to die and go back with the, all these special greatness and potentials and capabilities. But that is going to cause for your reincarnation. That is going to cause for your reincarnation. Because it is embedded in your soul. And you have to deliver that thing. And you are conceived with it. 
and you need to deliver it before the soul becomes free of that attachment. So this is going to call for several incarnations, many incarnations, where ultimately and finally you are able to deliver that conception, that special latent and potential conceptions within your soul to help elevate the earth consciousness. Then maybe you might exit and go and not come back again, or you might exit, go and come back as a higher dimension soul to come and contribute another phase of your specialness that you accrue for the next phase of the earth's evolution. So this is the reason why we are on earth. We are on earth here to contribute our specialness. All other material sensual gratifications are moment, interim provisions or, 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 or for want of better word, a, a, a temporary provisions that has been made for the soul to have a comfortable life to be able to conveniently carry out this special responsibility. And that is why we are on earth. And this is what we want everybody to, to know. And that is why we keep on hammering. Realize yourself. Realize yourself. Realize yourself. Because by the time you realize yourself, you will know why you are on earth. You will know who you are, why you are on earth, what you are supposed to do with your life. The kind of potencies and abilities and latent talents that you have been endowed with to fulfill that mission, to fulfill that purpose. Now, a lot of people are living the life that they want to live. They have become what they want to become, but not what they are supposed to become. So I want you to take a break and then just think back, brainstorm yourself and ask yourself, all that you are doing, whatever you engage in, whatever profession you have, whatever skill you are you, you're working with, is it what you are supposed to do or what you have chosen to do? You need to find answers to these things. Because the truth of the matter is, if you don't take time, you will die ignorant, you will die empty, you will die without fulfilling your purpose. Even though you may be able to acquire so much wealth, so much money, and so much riches, you will still die unfulfilled. Because wealth, which is a product of money and riches, is, is, is a reward for services rendered. So anybody, as long as you are rendering services or selling commodity or, or product, People are going to pay, and then the and the reward for that kind has the tendency of making you rich. But the fact that you are rich and wealthy does not mean you are wealthy, because you are not worth the life you have lived. You may be wealthy and not wealthy, and many people in this world are wealthy. They have acquired so much properties, so much material gain, and yet their life is not worthy because they've lived not to the expectation for the purpose why they existed. They have lived according to what they want to become, not according to what they are supposed to become. So, they are do so though they are wealthy, yet they are not wealthy. So and this is going to lead to several reincarnations of several souls. So in as much as you go through this, your earth evolution, it is paramount that you are able to find journey and find the purpose, why you are on earth, the, the, the latent potentials and capabilities and talent that you have been endowed with, and why, you, and why and how you are supposed to use these abilities for the collective good of humanity and for the collective elevation of the earth consciousness. Then you live a wealthy life, not a wealthy life. Many people, as I said, are living a wealthy life, but not a wealthy life. So ask yourself the second question. Am I living a wealthy life or a wealthy life? Ask yourself the second question. Do I want to live a life which is wealthy or wealthy? We need to distinguish all these things. Because after all, all these riches, all this wealth, we are not carrying it anywhere. But when you live a life which is wealthy, it's an enhancement, it's a plus for your soul's in incarnation and an advancement. So today, I would want you to relax, take your pen and paper if need be, and then let's go through today's subject. Today, I'm going to talk to you about a wonderful subject, which is 
affecting almost everybody, including myself. Either it is affecting you, or it has once upon a time affected you. Nobody has lived on this earth without experiencing that thing. And that subject I'm talking about, it is one of the very fundamental things that blocks us, becomes a, a blockade and a pitfall that prevents us from realizing our potential, from realizing who we are, from being the best of our, our, our ability. It is one of the things that can uh, put a restriction and a limitation on our ability to explore the realms of limitlessness, to be able to uncover and 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 and, and, and re release or unleash, let me use that word, unleash the power and the potencies embedded within ourselves. And that I am talking about is the energy or the power we call fear. Fear is one energy that has hunted almost every soul. Fear is one energy that has pursued every soul that endeavored to attain greatness, that has endeavored to attain heights in life, that has endeavored to realize their true potential, that has endeavored to be able to discover their true self and fulfill the purpose of their existence. Fear is one energy that has confronted each and every soul who desire to be what he is supposed to be, to live how he is supposed to live. Fear has confronted each and every soul who is on the journey of fulfilling its earthly mission. So we need to learn about it and to be aware of this energy we call fear and how to overcome this fear. Because I can tell you, for without, for, for without overcoming fear, it will be very difficult to make any significant progress in your life. And one of the things one needs to conquer in his life is the, in his internal fear. If you're unable to, un, to, to conquer and to overcome your internal fear, there is no way you can overcome the external fear. You must be able to conquer and triumph over your internal fears. Then you'll be well positioned with and galvanize enough energy to be able to confront any external threat and fear that will be posed towards you. And this is a very sensitive subject. I would like to take my time to address it. Fear as it may portray itself either in a tangible state or in a subtle state, it's a state of emotional awareness that kind of threatens one's ability to progress in life. So anytime you enter into that state of emotional awareness that kind of threatens and stagnates your ability to progress in life either in a very tangible way or in a very subtle way is that energy we have called fear that is at work it's an energy it's a force it's a vibration but we have named that vibration fear so it is actually an opposing vibration to the progression of human activity so you notice that any time you endeavor to start a project, any time you endeavor to start a particular assignment or to fulfill a particular mission or to embark on any significant errand, you are naturally opposed with an unidentified energy that tries to restrict and prevent you from making that necessary step, from moving on and to attaining that objective. That energy that opposes your progress and it acts through your subtle body of your emotional intelligence, we call that energy or we have named that energy fear. And you need to overcome that energy we call fear. We have two states of fear. We have the external fears and we have the internal fears. The most fearful fears is the internal fears. Allow me to use that word. The most fearful fears is your internal fear because it's the basis on which the external fear capitalizes on to be able to totally shut down your system. And if you don't treat this subject well and be able to transcend and overcome this energy, it can, it can polarize you and make you very polarized in 
a lot of aspects of your life. There are things that you can achieve so easily. Things that, heights that you are born to attain. Purpose that you are designed to fulfill. This opposing energy can restrict you from achieving it. There are people who are supposed to become president and they lost it because of fear. And sometimes fear presents its way in a subtle way in the form of shame or shyness. Oh, I'm a shy person. It's, the, it's a subtle form of fear. So because you are shy, what you need to be vocal about, what you need to be very courageous about, what you need to just go out and, 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 and lay your hands in and pick it up to fulfill your destiny and purpose in life. Oh, I'm a shy person. I just don't want it. Sometimes fear presents itself in a subtle way that I want to be gentle. Where you need to speak out your mind and then express your opinions and views in the state of gentility. You, 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 you want to be a gentleman. You want to be a lady. So where you need to go out for the catch and just go in for the kill, you, you, you're being gentle about it. All those things are subtle approaches that that energy we have called fear devices and uses in different ways and forms to restrict, ultimately, to restrict you from realizing your true potential, fulfilling your true potential, and contributing that specialness for the collective good and elevation of the human evolution. So it's something that we need to really, really deal with it. And it's a big problem for everybody. It's a big problem for the president. It's a big problem for you and I. It's a big problem for the ordinary president. It's a big problem for the... For the for, for the messenger in the workplace, for the director in the workplace, for the secretary. It's a big problem for, all, for almost all humanity. I have watched videos of excess of very profound national leaders, advanced countries, civilized country leaders, presidents, who, if they are going to give public speeches, they give them small, small uh, uh, clips for them to hold, and they'll be, they'll be squeezing. That's the strategy of them releasing tension. Tension is another form of fear, another subtle form of fear or type of fear. So in order for them to release tension, they give them some small spring like this where they hold it in their hand. Then as they talk, they'll be squeezing it. As they squeeze it, they, that helps them to, to tr transcend and overcome the tensions that fear is posing towards them. I have seen great leaders who initially had to be coached on how to overcome uh, 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 public fears, how to talk to po in public. I have met people who are wonderful people, have a lot of intelligence, have, have a lot of skill and know-how, and they go for interview and they fail because they are carried by the flight of fear. That as soon as they, they, they get in front of the people, they, they, they kind of lose their composure, lose their intelligence because fear. And this energy we call fear works in in, in in subtle ways and different ways. And these subtle ways and different ways at the apex of its full manifestation is what we call fear. When it begins to, 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 to terrify you and you become threatened in its full efficacy is what we call fear. But it has different shades and different dimensions in more subtle way that he deals with people. I have seen people who have gone to people's houses and they are hungry and they want food to eat and out of fear of asking for the food, asking and, and they, they see it as shyness or gentleness and they'll be there and their stomach will be rumbling. I have seen people who have visited places and they, 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 are, they are pressed in their stomach and they want a place of convenience and out of fears, they, 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 they have to carry it somewhere and they need to go through pressure. I used to have a friend way back, and, and, and uh, there was a time we went to visit the internet, and this guy was pressed. So the, this guy was pressed so much that if, if something is not done, he's going to spoil himself. So, and at the counter, I was at busy internet, and on the counter there were a lot of beautiful ladies buying their vouchers. Uh, in, that time, internet was not so common, so if you want to get an internet, either you go to busy internet or something like that. So... They, they were there, this university girls and all those things were there. Getting their, and the guy was feeling shy to go and request for the washroom keys. So he's my friend. And because he knew I have overcome that aspect of my personality to some extent, he called me, Charlie, Charlie, bro, this is what is happening to me. 
I said, go get a key. He said, oh, Charlie, Charlie, I had a fish eye, I had a fish eye. He was terrified with fear. And the same type, a more, you know, refined type of fear, they call shyness. So what I did was I walked with him to, to the counter to go for the kiss. But I wanted to show him that, look, why do you want to enslave yourself to emotional discord? So just a few distance before we got to the counter, I talked with a loud voice to the receptionist. Please, can you give me the keys to the washroom? I'm pressed. I want to go to the place of convenience. And look at what happened. All these beautiful ladies out there say that. So she was, oh, please, I'm coming. And they said, ladies, no. They, one of the ladies said, oh, no, leave it, leave it. Give him. He's, he's pressed. So the lady asked the, the receptionist to leave the job he's doing for her, for, 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 for her to get me the keys. So... By the time I got the keys, he was already standing at the gate of the washroom. And this is how far fear can make us, if we don't take time, disgrace ourselves and deny ourselves of certain basic rights that we possess. So this is something which is very important and I want to do it because I know it is affecting so many people. I was also a victim of that situation before. When I was at school, I remember back in the days when I was at school, people came to me that I should contest for the school president. Now, this is what happened. When I was in the first year, we, we, I was a little bit vocal. So during our meetings, I contributed a lot. So in the first year, I was, I was called to be on the planning committee of the Department of School of Applied Arts. So I was on a planning committee in the first year, which normally you, you only get to the st first year before you be called to the planning committee. But right first year, first semester, I was called to the planning committee because of a few internal contributions I made. So they saw that, no, I, I have good constructive mind because obviously before I went there, I've been engaged in a few businesses right at the secondary school level, dealing with big organizations, working for them. So I, I was exposed to certain things. So that uh, helped me. So when it was, we were in, getting the final year, when there was a competition for president of the various schools and all those things, students came to me that I should contest for the presidency. And I told them, oh, I don't want to be a president. Actually, I was shy and I was scared that what if I lose? And almost everybody came to me that why don't? So yes, I said, oh, I don't want to do it. I don't want to be in a leadership. No, I don't want to do that. I want to do that. But deep within my soul, I wish I, I wanted to do it. I, I felt I want to be there. And I felt I had so much potential, so much gifts and abilities that would help in a tremendous way. But because of that inner limitation of fear and, and, and its subtle state of shyness, I turned it down. Now, let, this is what happened. So we had another guy who contended the position, but he bears the same name with me. But his, his first name was the same first name I had, but his last name was Mante, and my last name was Mensa. When most of the people didn't know my last name, but most of them knew my first name, which of course we had the same first name. So after the voting session, he won. Whilst I was in my own, whilst I was in my hostel. I saw people dancing and playing drums coming to my hostel that I have won. And I told him, no, it's not me. I said, no, we saw your name. We voted for you. I said, no, that's not me. So his name is FM. Just ask my name was FM. But just it was different. You know, because of school, many people don't know your surname, but they know my first name. And we had the same first. Let's say if I am, I am, let's say if my first name is, let's say, John, he's also called John. And if my last name was Mensa, his, his name was, let's say, Mental. So his name was John Mental, and I'm John Mensa. But most people know me to be John. So when they, they saw the name, they voted. And obviously, those days, we're not having the voting with feature like the way we have the now ballot paper. It's just the name and the space of voting. So this is some of the things. I'm talking about a situation when I was at school. Every vacation, I can stay in school for almost about a week. I'm scared to on board and bus because I'm, I was scared I was going to have accidents. Because I saw so many accidents on the way. You know, back in the days, the way was very narrow and going through that long journey. 
every time I when I started the first year, because I have never seen accidents before because I've always been in Accra. So when I had to you know because I schooled in Accra, did everything in Accra, I went to secondary school in Accra. So uh, now that I have to travel outside Accra, every day on the way I'll meet one accident or the other. I saw dead bodies on the roadside covered with uh, neem tree branches and all those things. And as I wore this consistently, got to a time, if I get to school to come back home was a problem. When it's about time for us to res resume from recess to go back to school was a problem for me. Fear has gripped me because of what I saw. So it took me a concepted effort and by the grace of spirituality, when I discovered myself and I realized my true nature, naturally it frayed away effortlessly. So we are going to look at fear. And I know fear has troubled so many people. I have known children who have lost their potential, have lost their greatness because they were, they were, they were frightened from their beginning. So in my house, you don't frighten a child in my house. You don't say that I'm going to call the police to come and catch you. No, I don't entertain that in my house. Because I know the energy of fear, so you don't frighten my house, my kid in the house. When you do that, I'm, you're going to have a problem with me. Because it is something we must make the concerted effort to be able to overcome it. And if it is not there, we don't have to plant it. So my kids, when they were very young, three years, two years, four years, five years, I could put them in the living room and put up the lights and leave them alone in the living room and I go to the bedroom in my way of trying to teach them to be courageous and not to fear fear, not to have any uh, uh, energy of fear within themselves. But unfortunately, you cannot keep them in the house all the time. When they started going to school, I realized that they began entertaining some level of fears because at school, they threatened them. They threatened them with the key. They threatened them with so in, in different ways and different forms. With, they threatened them with punishment. They threatened them. So teachers must watch how they deal with kids. They should not put fear into children. You don't teach children by putting fear into that. So I noticed they've started entertaining some limits of fear. I'm still trying to work on it. I'm still trying to fight it and let them overcome it through the, their mind. So I, I now tell them, look, everything is a state of mind. What you don't want, don't entertain it into your brain, into your mind state, into your intellect state. So we need to be careful. So I'm treating the subject which is across board so that we know how to deal with this issue of fear. So, as I have designed fear for you, you should be able to guard against it. Because fear will resonate within the intellect. From the intellect, it gets into your emotion. But it works more within the, your field of emotions. Within, within your feeling field, that's where fear works more. So, fear works most of the time. It's functioning more in the, in the heart section. But we are going to see how fear resonates from the very base. Because, you know, we have seven energy centers in your body from the root to the crown, okay? So that seven energy center, that determines how the, the, your uh, entire nervous system functions into that level of your connectiveness, your connectedness to the, the higher consciousness. And one thing that resonates in all, from the very base to the very crown, to the very seven dimension of your energy frequency is fear. That is one amazing thing. From the very base, it resonates through all the various energy centers right to the seventh one. Certain uh, negative character traits only functions within certain level of your energy center and cannot go to other side of your energy centers. But fear is able to resonate itself through all the seven fields of your energy center. So it's something that you really need to work at it. So anytime a human being is threatened, Anytime a human being is, is, is sense, is, senses an attack or an aggression, that, that attack, threat, or aggression tends to appear to be more powerful than his ability to triumph or to transcend, to overcome it. It generates fear. And it generates it at, the, at your emotional dimension or, you, or your emotional field or your emotional frequency or vibration. And then if you don't take time, it, 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 it permeates and percolates through all your energy centers. Once it's able to permeate through your energy center, it grips your entire personality. When it grounds your internal, ent entire personality, if you don't take time, it will put you in a state of confusion. It will put you in the state of stress and depression. 
I know people who have been terrified with fear to the extent that they cannot even move their body. For well, that, I think the term they use is freeze. They become frozen. They become so frozen that they cannot even move their body. When they see a threatening or a terrifying thing approaching them, they become, they, they freeze. That is the level to which fear can affect you if you allow it to penetrate through all your energy centers of your body. So it's something that you need to work at it. Today, maybe we are going to look at the various forms and shapes fear takes in the various energy centers and a few other things. Then, maybe in another set of video, we are going to look at some of the practices. If, if still there is time, we are going to look at some of the practices that you can do to, 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 to send that energy out and to, or to stall that energy and to, and to dissipate it. So, at the end of the day, we go to master courage and, and be able to fulfill the purpose for which we are, we, we are on this earth.